Hi everyone. In this video, I'd like to show you how to present that I'm mining results in a research paper. I have received a lot of questions about this particular topic in the past, but it is not an easy task to do since there is no specific template that we could use. As you know that that the mining is exploratory in its nature. Therefore, the results are also rather flexible depending on the purpose of the data mining and the machine learning used in the research project. In this video, I'll show you how I present the data mining process and results. Keep in mind that this is the way I usually use. It is not the only way to do that. Regardless, I hope you will find it useful, especially if you are new to data mining. Now the question that I usually received is how to cite the advice or guidelines that I have on my videos. It is a good question, and videos are not considered a valid citation by many journals. And I appreciate you citing my guidelines. Accordingly, I find it best to give you some of my publications that you can cite since I use the same methods and steps in those publications. For the purpose of this video, you can cite a paper that I recently published in the Journal of Air Transport Management. And man, as many of you might already know, this is one of the top tier journals in transportation. It is in the first quartile of the field of transportation with 97th percentile. That means the journal is ranked higher than 97% of journals indexed by Scopus in the field of transportation. In the field of air transportation, it is the top one. Besides, Elsevier is among the top publishers of academic journals in the market. I will use my paper publication in this journal to demonstrate how to present data mining process and present the findings in a research paper. Keep in mind that journal articles are usually subject to word limitation, so we do not add a lot of details as in a dissertation. That is not to mention many reviewers are already familiar with the methodology, so they do not need a lecture on the selected method. Finally, I focus mainly on the content and organizations of content rather than format and styles because journals have different requirements regarding formatting and styles and references. In order to help you fully understand how to write and present results for data mining research, I will cover all parts of the paper, but I will focus more on the methodology sections and the results sections. Introduction section. As with other types of research, the introduction section will provide enough information about your paper, research problem, purpose of the study, and why it is important to do it. The introduction section should focus and provide some introduction of the topic with some brief background information about the topic so the audience can have a foundation of the study. We should summarize the literature and shortcomings which help us come up with the research problem and research questions. Then we describe the purpose of the study, the significance of the study, why it is important to do it, and some delimitations and assumptions for the studies. Those are just some parts of the introduction in my paper. I will not go too deep in the topic of this paper because it is not the purpose of this presentation. Basically, my paper focuses on predicting the violations incidents of small UAS when they enter the national airspace system. So first, I give a very brief introduction about small UAS, its growth, FAA regulations, and safety concerns with small UAS operations. Then I describe the research problem, purpose of study, and contributions of this paper to the body of knowledge. Literature review section. In this section, I reviewed in more detail some li relevant literature of small UAS, such as see and avoid by pilots, sense and avoid technology, risk assessment model, etc. Finally, I described the research gap, 
which is a lack of a predictive model that can predict UAS violations, incidents in NAS. An important section is methodology, where we need to describe the research design and how we conduct data mining. The first part of this section focuses on defining the target variable, since it will determine the machine learning algorithms that we use. I use categorical target variable with three levels, so these categories must be specified. For example, one represents UAS flying beyond 400 feet above the ground. Two represents UAS flying within five miles from the airport. And three captures UAS flying in restricted airspace. The target variable must be based on the regulations, literatures, and practical needs. The next part is data mining process in which I describe the data mining process that I used in this paper, which is SEMA process. So I describe briefly the SEMA process and all steps in this process, including sample, explore, modify, model, and assess. The next important part of methodology in a data mining paper is machine learning algorithms. The reviewers always want to know what machine learning algorithms that we use, why, and what configurations that we use for those algorithms. In the paper, I present seven machine learning algorithms that I use with some brief descriptions and references for each of them. I also describe the specific analytical configurations that I use for those models. I would not go very deep in each of them, unless your paper is focused on one specific algorithm with adjustments for improvement. I have another paper that I focus on artificial neural network in which I provide detailed mathematical formulas and the model, modeling process. I can, say, can share that with you once it's published. But in this paper, I chose to use seven machine learning algorithms. So in table two, I provided some detailed analytical configuration for those models. The next important part in methodology is data sets and variables. Data mining is data-driven method, so it is very important that we provide enough information to help the audience understand what data, how large the data that we are using. This paper, I describe how data are coded, cleaned, and treated. As you know, the UAS citing reports are qualitative data. So I had to code the data into variables for analysis this purpose. Due to the poor quality of the citing reports, text mining would not work in this case. Hence, in this section, I described in detail how to code the data, variables, coding protocol, and how to evaluate the reliability reliability of the codes. Table 3 describes variables we use in the coding process. Most variables are nominal scales given the nature of the data set. The data were coded by two coders and I perform iterator reliability tests to make sure the codes are reliable. After the methodology section, we move on to the results section. This, the other, this is rather an important section as we have many results of the data mining process. Since data mining papers have very different results compared to statistical papers, we have to be mindful of the differences and make decisions what is the best way to present our results to ensure the coherence and the flow of the content. In the results sections in data mining, we usually start with presenting descriptive statistics and demographic information, as they will help justify the generalizability of the study. Then we present detailed outcome of predictive modeling results. This is a primary part of the results sections, and it should include the model performance criteria. For example, misclassification rate, lift chart, RC chart, 
and average square. Note that misclassification rate, lift chart, and RC chart are only available for categorical target variable. For continuous target variable, we usually use average square error and relative error. For model, reliability, my suggestion is to perform a comparison of selected results between the training and the validation samples. If the results are consistent between two samples, then we can conclude that the models are reliable. Using the selected criteria, we compare the model to, the, to select the champion model. Once it is identified, we need to go deeper in the performance evaluation of this model to evaluate the validity of our study. Confusion metric is used to evaluate the prediction accuracy from different aspects, such as the overall accuracy, sensitivity, or true positive, specificity, or true negative, positive predicted value, PPV, and negative predicted value, or NPV. We also need to evaluate the predictive power using criteria such as lift charge, RC charge, Gini index, for the categorical target variable, or R square and relative error for the continuous target variable. The impacts of predictors on the target variable are evaluated using variable importance or coefficients depending on the algorithms. Finally, if we use scoring in the modeling process, then the scoring output needs to be presented as well. Let's look at the results section in my paper. First, I presented the coding reliability results with kappa coefficients to show that I have achieved acceptable interrater reliability for the codes. Then in table 5, I show some descriptive statistics for some key variables. Note that descriptive statistics mostly refers to the minimum value, maximum value, means values, and standard deviation values. Then it is important to show some demographic information for selected variables. Demographic information, along with some descriptive statistics, can help us justify the generalizability of our study. It is usually recommended to use graphs such as bar charts and pie charts to present the demographic information because this information is typically available in ranges or nominal scales. And those charts will be easier to understand and follow. After presenting descriptive statistic and demographic information, we start the most important part of the results section, predictive modeling results. The first thing that we need to present in the section is the model selection criteria. For example, in my paper, I have categorical target variable. So I use misclassification rate as the main selection criterion. Using this misclassification rate, I compare seven models using SAS Enterprise Minor. Table 6 shows the model comparison in terms of misclassification rate. The one with the lowest misclassification rate is the most accurate model. Misclassification rate is usually used to evaluate the predictive accuracy. In order to further validate this model, we look at the predictive power we use lift chart and RC chart for this purpose. In this paper, I present the lift chart for all models to make comparison. The chart further validated that, that gradient boosting is the best model. Once we selected a champion model, gradient boosting model, we need to evaluate this model in detail to confirm the validity of the model. I presented the confusion matrix, which shows the actual numbers and the predicted numbers for each category of the target variable. Using the confusion matrix, I calculated and presented the sensitivity and specificity for this. They capture the true positives and true negatives. If one of these is too low, I would suggest showing positive predicted values and negative predicted values. In addition, the predictive power can be evaluated by lift chart and ROC chart to confirm that our model is valid. 
In order to understand the impact of each predictor on the target variable, I presented the variable importance in Table 9. Note that gradient boosting is basically an extended version of decision tree, so there are no coefficients for this type of model. The var variable importance percents show which variable contributes most to predicting the target variable. This is the results that we use to interpret the impacts of predictors. Finally, if we run a scoring for the model, we present We'll present the scoring codes. In this paper, I presented the codes in the appendix because it is not really important to the prediction. I just wanted to show how the model can be converted to SAS codes, which can ultimately be integrated in actual system. The final part of the paper is discussions and conclusions. We need to understand the differences between these two sections. Discussions focus on discussing the findings from the analysis and any specific answers to our research questions. More specifically, which predictors have impact on the target variable and the extent of those effects. The importance of those predictors also need to be discussed. We should highlight which outcomes are consistent with the literature and which ones are unexpected findings along with possible explanations. The unexpected findings could be new knowledge discovery, so more attention should be paid to them. The conclusion section focuses on explaining the major contributions of this paper, specifically how it adds value to the body of knowledge and how it provides practitioners and authorities with useful information to develop strategies to mitigate the risks or improve the performance. We can also include recommendations for future research. So that's how we write and present data mining results in a research paper. Again, this is my way of doing it. I've been effectively using this approach in many of my papers and published them. But this doesn't mean that this is the only way to do it. I hope this presentation will give you one good example of results presentation for data mining. As I mentioned before, there's no standardized way to present data mining results. So depending on the purpose of your study and selected machine learning algorithms, you can decide what is the best way to write and present results. I put the reference for my paper here again, in case you want to use any of my guidelines in this presentation, you can cite that paper. Please subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed. Thank you and bye now.